Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Thank you very much for joining me today. As you can see by the title, uh, I have a review of the um, Conte Pastel Pencils. Now, um, before I get into the review, I just want to I just want to say uh, something very very quickly. For those of you that have been uh, following my videos and uh, tweets and Facebook posts and stuff like that, you'll be aware that we've my wife and I have been having some. Uh, problems with our youngest daughter Amelia she's been very very ill um, she was bullied for two and a half years at school she kind of like fell into um, a deep depression anxiety issue thing and we had we had loads and loads of problems with her um, for about eight months but thankfully um, we're, she's on the mend and things are starting to get back to normal with her and she's starting to be a much more happier and we're we're getting our daughter back really which is what it seems like so i just wanted to let you guys know because i know some of you have been following it quite closely and emailing me and stuff like that which i can't tell you how much i appreciate but um she's she's really on the main now and we're we're just thrilled especially you know coming up to christmas and stuff like that but anyway so uh, on with this review of the Conte Pastel Pencils. Now, first of all, I just must say before I start this, I've had these pastel pencils now for a, about just over a year, maybe a little bit longer. I ordered them um, uh, quite a while ago and I just put them into kind of like a filing system. Whenever I get products to review, I put them into a system and I try to work out that when I'm doing my reviews, I'm not doing... I don't want to do like two watercolor pencils side by side. Um, I try to make sure that I'm doing like a pastel related thing, then a watercolor pencils, then maybe uh, something different like an accessory or then some graphite pencils. I try to mix it up and make sure that they're not together so that you're not getting like three or four reviews side by side and all of the reviews are watercolor pencils or just ordinary color pencils. So I, I, I try to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. So anyway, I've had these for quite a while um, and I've got round to reviewing them and I'm glad I have. So this is the 24 set. Now they come, my only, my, I have a couple of kind of gripes with the, the, the pastel pencils and some, some of the gripes that I have are not, I, I don't think they're actually anything to do with the, the pencils themselves. Uh, and the other gripe is actually quite um, normal for me because when I come across a product that I really enjoy using, stuff like that, and then find out that they don't have big large sets, uh, like a large palette, I get upset about it because I think to myself, oh, it, th that, that product would be great in a 120 set or a 72 set. So it's I say it's a gripe, but it's a good gripe because... Um, it just goes to show you how how much I enjoyed the the, the 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 actual product. So this is the 24 set. They come in a set of 12, 24, and 48. They skipped the 36 set and just went 12, 24, 48. They also do little blister sets of uh, six, um, and they kind of come in. Uh, genres so like there's a landscape set there's a pastel past you know pastel tone set um, things like that there's not very many of those I think there's about four or maybe five of those I have all the details over on the art gear guide the written review of this and also as well the prices now another thing about this particular brand of pencil they are quite popular so I checked lots of different places like uh, whenever I'm doing my price and I always go to Amazon check Amazon uh, because it's 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 a more global it's much more generic so I can it's easier to just do that in America I couldn't find any Conte pastels or Conte pastel pa pencils on their uh, amazon.com site but if you go to the likes of Jerry's and Blix I've checked those uh, stores out and they sell them they stock them so they're really quite popular they're easy to get hold of which is always a, a plus uh, i know that sometimes i do product reviews and um 
the, the product that I'm, rev- I'm reviewing may not always be available in certain countries. And some people say to me, well, what's the point in reviewing it? Well, the point in reviewing it is that um, you still can get hold of some certain products. You might just have to go a long way about getting it. Uh, and there are other countries where the products are available. And I'm so fortunate enough that people watch this channel from all over the world. So I'm trying to make sure that I, I cover everybody. So anyway, let's have a look at the pencils. Now, um, as you can see, I've used them. Um, but I have images coming up on the screen here. It shows you what the set looked like when it first started out. Um, and I'm sure straight away that you're going to be able to notice these pencils down here. The um, This kind of like yellow ochre, this cream color. And this, I would say this is like a raw umber color. Um, certain pencils, the, these pencils and two others, uh, I think it was the, the black and the white actually. Uh, but the black and the white weren't, weren't too bad. They just wouldn't sharpen at all. Now I tried various different methods. I tried obviously the, the Karen Dash uh, hand crank sharpener that I have, the, the Dermot one, the M&R one that I have. Um, I tried my little uh, M&R um, brass sharpener as well, but th- that didn't work. Um, and I, I, I also tried um, like a, a craft knife, that type of thing. And also, I tried this little product, which I am going to be doing a review on, uh, so keep an eye out for that. But I tried this little product as well, and nothing happened. The core of the, the pencils, it, it, they just kept falling out. So when I like stripped back the wood with the knife, as soon as I touched the core, the core would just kind of like crumble. Now, I don't know whether that is um, something that is widespread in Conte Pastel pencils. Uh, so if you guys have got Conte Pastel pencils and you've experienced this, then let me know in the comments because that's the only way I'm going to know whether this is just something that has happened. You know, it's just a one-off thing. This particular tin that I have had sent to me uh, just has three bad or f- like five bad pencils in it, um, or whether it's a common it's a common problem with the pencils. Um, if it's a common problem, if it's kind of like widespread, it's really, really quite sad because the actual quality of the pencils themselves, which I'll get into in a second, is really, really, really good. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that because I've had these pencils over a year, they've sat under my desk, they've been moved about, that type of thing, perhaps maybe it's my fault, the, they've been knocked about and, and I'm hoping that's what it is. As always, I've done a, um, a, a speed drawing uh, um, using the pastel pencils. Now, in the speed drawing, I've done a background. I used just some unison pastel blocks for the background because uh, it's, it's really difficult to get an even surface with just pastel pencils whenever you're doing a big background. People can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. But I'm not experienced enough with pastels to be able to accomplish something like that. So I just used blocks for the background. And then the, the actual bird was done with uh, the, the pastel pencils. So a little bit about the pencils themselves. So they're, I think they're the biggest pastel pencil that I have used in terms of the core diameter, which is 5mm, and the barrel, which is 8mm. It's a really well-balanced pencil. Um, they're gorgeous to hold in the hand. They're, they're, they're just really nice. They just feel right. Um, each barrel is lacquered in the color that identifies with the, the pigment in the core. So visually identifying the color that you want is really simple, really easy. Uh, along the barrel, there's not too much information. But anyway, along the barrel, you've got the, the Conte A Pari, which is the, the company name. Uh, towards the end here, you have pastel and then a number, which actually corresponds with the pigment because these pencils are sold in open stock. So that number um, corresponds with the actual pigment of that particular pencil. Then it says France, which is obviously where the company origins are. 
Uh, and then there's another number here, which is uh, 1355. That number is on all the pencils. So that, I, I'm assuming, um, indicates that it's a pastel pencil. And again, that will just be for stock purposes and, and order and that type of thing. Um, and that's really it. There's no pigment name or there's no light fast information or anything like that on the pastel pencils. But... I have provided a chart which uh, Conte have on their website over on the Art Gear Guide, which you can go across and see. And I've also provided light fast information. Uh, out of the 48 pencils, how many are high light, highly light fast and how many are uh, not so light fast. Um, as always, the prices and things like that, they are over on the Art Gear Guide as well. I don't mention them on the video purely and simply because prices change so often and it's easier for me to change um, the website, just go in and change the website. But in terms of the light fast information, so as I say, all, actually on all my written review, I have the chart available there for you. You can go across because the pigment names are on the chart as well. So if you were going to get like the 48 set, you could swatch them all out and then um, correspond with the, the number and the, the chart and then write the pigment name down. If that, if that you know, helps you out as an artist anymore. Um, in terms of the light fast ratings, so... They've got a star rating, so four star equals excellent light fast. Three star is equal to good light fast. Um, two star is moderate, and one star is the lowest. So, out of the 48 pencils that they have, 26 pigments are rated four star. Four pigments are rated three star. 14 pigments are rated two star. And four pigments are rated one star. So, if you if you take by that, the, th the the four and the three stars are probably the pencils that you can use on a commission or something like that. So, out of out of the the forty eight set, thirty of those pencils you could comfortably use. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly how light fast the two stars are. I know it says there that it just they categorize that two star rating as uh, moderate um, but I think to be on the safe side if you're going to be doing a commission you would have to stick with the four and the three star so you've got 30 pencils out of the 48 which isn't a bad ratio actually um, so let's have a little look at the pencils uh, in action here like I say to, to see the pencils properly you can have a look at my demonstration which is a, a speed drone uh, and I also have still images of the artwork as well which you can have a look at but I've got some pastel mat here. Now, I don't like using a lot of my pastel mat whenever I'm doing swatches and things like that because it's so expensive. I try to keep it for... Um, I, I try to keep it for my artwork and stuff like that. But I've cut a little bit of pastel mat off here. It's wine. This is Clairefontaine pastel mat. And um, I'm just going to show you Some of the colours. And I'm also going to show you how this works on some... Uh, I've got some Dealer and Rowney Ingress paper. Which I personally can't get along with. I don't really work, use it that often. But uh, I'm still going to show you in any case. <clears throat> now... Um, for those of you that haven't used pastel map before. It's kind of like a sand sand paper texture i'm just going to zoom in here for you okay so i'm just um you can see there immediately and i'm not putting a lot of pressure down but you know when it comes to pastels it's really difficult to it's not like colored pencils um where you you know you've you used all your different pressures and stuff like that but you can see um you can see there that the pigment is really really strong I'm going to do a little bit of kind of blending and show you using like a paper stump and some um, like pastel sponges. How you can, you know, how you can manipulate the, the pigment when it's on the pastel mat. 
but again there there's that beautiful it it's like a canary yellow and you can just see there how bright and vibrant that color is uh, I've got a, a red here again very very strong pigments and when you're when I was you know using these pastel pencils the, the contact pastel pencils on the artwork that I was doing you know layering and stuff like that was perfect and I know that the, the layering has a lot to do with the surface that you're using um, I've got a black one here uh, and I know a lot of pastel artists and colored pencil artists try to stay away from just using black it's quite a flat color but it's still interesting to to see the pigment just in its uh, raw form and then I've got the, the white pastel pencil here now the really good thing about using pastels and I know there's a lot of artists that just can't stand the, the feel of pastel in their hands uh, so like using the, the, the block pastels is idle question for them but if they really did want to get into pastel art I think po possibly pencils is the best way to go because you have minimum contact with the actual pastel powder but if you look here, one of the really good things about using pastels is that unlike color pencil, you can come in on a dark surface like this black and add a highlight with the white pencil. So So there you go, you can see there immediately you've got that nice white. So, I'm talking, you know, like if you're doing eyes, that type of thing, and you've got that little sparkle in the eye, that with pastels, it's much, much easier. With the color pencil, you just couldn't do that. You'd have to either cut, take it out with a, a craft knife or an eraser, an electric eraser, or just leave, a, a you know, the paper. Uh, but with pastels, you, you don't have to worry so much about that. So when you're using pastels, uh, when you're blending that type of stuff, you've got lots of different things that you can use, like these pastel sponges. They're qu quite like uh, <coughs> makeup sponges because my daughters have got these lying all over the place. Uh, but they're very, very much like makeup sponges. Um, then we have this little tool as well, which um, it just um, it gives you the same type of feel of a pencil. It gives you a little bit more control over what you're blending. Uh, and these little sponges... Uh, on the end here they just come off and you get little packs of them and you just replace them back in and then uh, there's lots of other different things as well but these are just a couple that I'm showing you here and then obviously you've got the the, the blending stump as well so I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, blending here just to show you that you know you can still mix colors so you would put your yellow down and get your blue here and then you can either use the pencil to kind of like blend and mix that all in And all this dust here that it's creating, you know, obviously blow away what you don't need, but that's all still pigment, and you still want to rub that into the surface as much as you can. You don't want to waste any pigment uh, if you can help it. And there you can see. Or maybe you can't actually I'd need to put a bit more blue in there. There you can see that there it is. I'll take a photograph of this and you'll be able to see it over in the art gear guy, but um, the lights are very bright as you can see there that I've got a green 
So in terms of um, pulling the pigment out, manipulating it when it's on the pastel map, again, with the, this particular brand, this Conte brand, the the core of the pencil, it's really it's it's really complicated to explain because it's really soft. Um, uh, it's not like a chalk or anything like that. It's much much softer than that, and um, the pigment because it's so strong and vibrant, you you have a lot to work with. So you know, just pulling this pigment out and working with it works really really well. And this also helps on the with regards to layering and building up layers, just as you would do with an ordinary colored pencil. Um, but I really, I've really, really enjoyed using these pastel pencils. My only problem, like I say, was the fact that there's only 48 in the set, and I wish I'd have got the 48 set rather than the 24 set. And also, as well, the um, the breakages that I had. Now I know that's just part and parcel of pencils in general, but um, that's what I'm trying. I'm actually trying to establish whether this is something that's common in the Conte brand, uh, I, but I don't think it is. So uh, I've also got some um, Dealer and Rani Ingress paper, which this was the paper I first started out using with when I started using pastel pencils and pastels and stuff like that, and I. I I personally just couldn't work with it. It just, it, it caused me many, many problems and it, it, it actually kind of put me off pastels. But you absolutely can use it because wonderful artists such as Colin Bradley, who's one of the, one of my favorite pastel, uh, pastel pencil artists, he uses the Ingress paper and he gets fantastic results from it. Um, I mean, like there really is so many wonderful pastel artists out there at the minute. It's, um, you're really, really spoiled for choice. Uh, Emma, Emma Colbert is another one. Gail Sib Sibley. Um, and, and there's lots of other ones as well. That If you're interested in pastels, definitely go and have a look. I'll have the links for some of the my favourite pastel artists uh, down below, just in case you're interested. But um, I'm just going to do like a swatch here on this Ingress paper as well with these Conte pastel pencils. Um, and I think actually, although this paper I find very, very difficult to use, I think this will give you some indication of how good the quality is of the pastels, uh, the, the pigment inside these pencils, because um, they work really well even on this Ingress paper. So let me just zoom in a little bit. So I'll start off with the white there because this is kind of like a sandy color. Um, you can see it's not as vibrant as when I used it on the, the the pastel map and that's just purely and simply because when you're using it on the pastel mat the pastel mat just grabs hold of that pigment and doesn't let it go uh, with the ingress it's more like a, a rigid paper um, there's not very much texture on it at all so I'm going to use this black one as well I'll zoom in in a minute. You'll be and hopefully the camera will pick up the little ridges. What I mean, it'll show you what the surface of the paper is actually like. Um, we'll go with this red. Uh, blue. And then this yellow. I mean, one of the advantages of using the Ingress paper, I suppose, is that with the pastel mat, it doesn't move about as much. Whenever you put your pigment down and you get your sponges and stuff like that, it doesn't really move about as much. But with this Ingress paper, uh, you'll be able to see here, actually, let me use this red because it'll probably come up better. So I'm going to put a lot of pigment down here, but you, if you you'll probably be able to see that when I pulled it out on the pastel mat, when I pulled the pigment out on the pastel mat, it didn't really travel that far. But with this, you can see here that because there's much less texture on the paper, it really does get 
cover a much much larger area as opposed to when I done it on the pastel paper so you can see there it's really quite quite small and then as opposed to this where the pigment just stretches out much much further um, so that's the different papers and I know this this review isn't about the different papers but it's, it is showing you how these Conte pastel pencils perform on these two different papers as well okay guys that, that's it for the review of the Conte pastel pencils so to kind of like sum things up um, I really enjoyed using these I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't get the full 48 set um, that that's how much I enjoyed using them the the breakage issue that I had you know I think that's just one of those things uh, personally Un unless in the comments section I get more feedback from people saying yes they have the same problem I'm just going to put it down to one of those things it's unfortunately part and parcel of being a pencil artist, whether you're a graphite pencil artist or coloured pencil artist or whatever. We all know the different brands that have a tendency to break more easily. And we all know that with our pencils, we've got to really, really be delicate with them uh, for fear of shattering the core inside the, the barrels. So that's just one of those things. Uh, and I'm going to put that down to, you know, this just being one of those things, albeit... There was, out of a 24 set, there was five pencils that really kind of like just, I couldn't sharpen them at all, which was sad because I I needed those colours for the for the bird. Uh, so it, it did hinder me a little bit. Uh, and when you pay any amount of money, it doesn't matter whether it's a vast amount or whether it's quite a reasonable amount, when you buy 24 pencils, you should really expect to be able to use 24 pencils um, but I also have to take into consideration that I've had these lying around for a year I didn't use them as soon as I bought them so I could have been the problem I could have been the cause of the breakage in the pencils moving them about, um, about so I have to be honest and let you know all those different variables as to the reason why that they might be like that Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this review. Thank you so much for all your wonderful support with Amelia as well. I can't tell you how much my wife and I appreciate it. And Amelia as well. And I just want to say th um, thank you for all the support. The channel is growing really well at the minute. Um, I think there's nearly 12,000 subscribers now on the YouTube channel. And then obviously the social media sites as well have got quite a following as well so if you're interested follow me on twitter and facebook as well and instagram i'm always putting photographs up on instagram uh, of work in progress artwork that i'm doing or new products that i get that i'm going to be reviewing things like that so uh, i'll have the links for those down below and also as well if you want to give a like i didn't realize that when you like videos it kind of gives them a little bit more um uh it, it kind of like just bumps them up a little bit on the YouTube ratings so then more people get to see the videos. So if you do like, don't just put a like on just because I'm asking you. If you do enjoy the video and you get a little bit of benefit from it, then give it a like. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, my main concern is that you guys get some sort of benefit from watching these videos and hopefully you save yourself a few pound or a few dollars whatever your currency is here and there by looking at the videos and going all right okay that particular product isn't actually for me or yeah that product looks amazing i want to go and get that product so um that's my main aim with this channel not millions of subscribers or anything else like that there it's just trying to save you guys a little bit of money or spend your money and know that you're going to get full value for the money that you are spending See you next time, guys. And uh, don't forget, I will be doing a review of that little product that I showed you in the video here with regards to sharpening pastel pencils and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that review. That'll be a good one as well. Thanks, guys. Bye.